Hello, Greg Lasseur, Online Tennis Instruction, and welcome to part two on how to fix an open racket face on your serve. So in the first part, if you haven't seen that, I recommend you watch it first. We showed you some footage of Sean working on starting in her racket drop position and really leading with the edge and delaying the pronation. This is a very important step to helping you to then fix this open racket face when you complete your right to left. Now once Sean was able to consistently and correctly execute coming up on edge and delaying the pronation, we then got to work on her right to left. Now the right to left is where the racket tip is pointing somewhere to the right, where you bend from the elbow and the racket's gonna move from the right side of your body over the head towards the left. And it's moving right to left diagonally forward over here. Now, as you do that, you want the palm of the hand and the string face to angle slightly downward. So that's going to help take stress off the shoulder and help you to really get into that optimal racket drop position. So let's take a look at some of the drills which she did. Now this drill comes from Vic Braden. And here you want to take a ball and you want to hold the ball like this where your thumb is down, your fingers are on top, where the ball sign is facing away from you. So if I look like this, I can see the ball sign. So you want to get into this position here where your shoulders and your elbows are aligned. You have this nice diagonal here, all right? Now you want the ball sign pointing down. You know, I like to have the left arm up as well. Now from here, you're going to bend from the elbow, isolate this, where you keep the elbow in this position right here. And you're going to bend in a way where the hand is going to move towards you. It's going to move between the ear and the elbow where it moves over the bicep. Now as you do that, you should be able to look back and see the ball sign. Let me do that again. So you've got this nice shoulder elbow alignment. Try to pretend that the elbow is resting on a post. You're going to bend from the elbow. The hand will come towards you. It'll move between your ear and your elbow where the palm of the hand moves over the bicep. And you can see that ball sign. To show you from a different perspective, I'm going to bend it this way. See how the hand appears to be coming forward and towards me. Just kind of show you from this perspective as well. You can see the ball sign. You turn here, right there. That's a very important drill to help you to understand the correct wrist position, but also how you specifically bend from the elbow. All right, so once we went through that drill, we then added the racket. Now, very important, we want to choke up on the racket first. That's going to give you better awareness of where the racket tip is and make it much easier to execute this correctly. Now, Sean did have to make a grip change, which can be very difficult, but we went from more that grip three to at least a 2.5. Okay, that's the ridge between grips two and three. That's an intermediary change where eventually you move it all the way to two, or you could immediately go all the way to two. That just depends from player to player. But you want to choke up on the racket. So we had to set up like this with this alignment, and then we had to mimic what you did with the ball, but now with the racket in hand, bend from the elbow. See how the hand comes towards you, and it moves between the ear and the elbow where the palm is pointing slightly down over the bicep. So we had to do this over and over and then made sure she allowed the racket to continue to drop behind her back, right? So if you relax the arm, the racket can drop this way. So you can, you can progress it. So again, into this position here, notice how the, the, the elbow is going to bend. The hand will actually come towards me this way. So the racket's moving from right to left. So we had to do multiple shadow swings like that. And then once she got the feel for it, then we added the pronation to the shadow swing. So start it like this, bending from the elbow, coming up on edge, and then pronating. Okay, I had to do that over and over again. Okay, then we added the ball to that. And that's where you want to stand inside the court. You take the outcome out of the equation. You want to start in what we call that half serve position, just like this. So you can just isolate this move right here. Okay, the key is you're going to toss the ball first. Once you release the ball, you will then bend from the elbow. That allows you to really focus on that hitting arm. So we had to then toss the ball from the half serve, just serving straight ahead, not worry too much about the outcome. You can do it over and over. I do find that some players struggle with that. You can even start in what I call the salute position, where the racket's a little bit further along, but it hasn't quite crossed your head. This can also help you to isolate um, those key components of the swing. Now a common problem we see when players are working on their serve and working on the right to left is they struggle to get into the key power position we call the racket drop. And that's where the racket 
po tip points down and aligns to the right side of the body. You also notice how the elbow is up in this position and the forearm is almost parallel to the ground. Now, you've got to be very careful getting that position because if you lack mobility in the shoulder, you may end up injuring yourself. So be very careful, never force that position. But a good drill for that, and we use this with Sean, is to start in the half serve position and toss the ball up and complete what we call the elbow the ball drill. Yeah. Then bring it over your head. Toss. Yeah. And when you're doing that, the elbow is going to come around and up. We lead with the elbow, the ball is going to land right here. That's going to help to get into that key racket drop position. So you can complete that over and over. And then when you film it, you actually see, you get to the point that if you can get the, the elbow up and into the racket drop position where the ball is still high enough to reach up and hit it, it'll indicate to you that there's a sufficient time so you can think of elbowing the ball and then simply reaching up to contact. So that concludes part two of this three-part case study series. Give these drills a try. Be sure to post your comments and questions below. I look forward to getting back to you. Make sure you look out for the next video where we'll show you how to put everything together.